Hey everyone, Wanderbots here, and welcome to Jenny Leclou, Detective Vu. I, I'm assuming it's French. Probably? I'm not sure. <laughs> Either way, it's this is a game that went through Kickstarter a while back, and I've been hearing, in fact, I've been following uh, several of the development team members, people? I'm not entirely sure. I don't even know how big big the team is, but I've been following at least the main Twitter and, and one of the main people. The art looks awfully cute. It is adorable. Uh, but so it went through Kickstarter a couple of years ago, looked really cute, did fairly well. And yeah, I've just been watching it develop for ages since and just woke up to an email a couple of days ago being like, hey, you want a copy of Jenny LeClue? And I'm like, heck yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. and, and you said that it was inspired in part by Nancy Drew. I think so. I could be wrong, but I'm getting such a heavy Nancy Drew vibe. I'm assuming as such. <laughs> I mean... I grew up reading Nancy Drew, and yeah, one one feature that they always had to indicate about her is that she had that strawberry, strawberry blonde hair. In this case, it looks a little bit more red, yep. or ginger. And but... I think we're supposed to be fairly young, comparatively. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, though I think Nancy was originally a teenager. Hmm. Fair enough. I've never she... read them. I read like the Boxcar. Oh, the Boxcar Children. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. That was that was like the four siblings. Yeah, there was the boxcar children, children, and then there was like another one that was kind of in a similar vein, but it was only one boy detective. Uh, and then there were like two well, brothers. Yeah, the Hardy Boys. Or yeah, something. I read the Hardy yeah. Boys a couple of times. Or Harvey Boys. I think and it's Hardy. Like there was one of them that was just filled with like killing people, and I'm like, ah. Uh. Like I think they were in a most dangerous game type island, and I was like, holy wait, this is a. This feels weird and wrong to give to kids, but all right. I don't know. Anyway, so I will admit we actually have a bit of an embargo on this game. Specifically, uh, the devs have asked us not to play past the first hour. I can look up exactly the spot. It's like a dream sequence that we have to stop at. And then after that, they want us to wait a while so that they don't have spoilers flying around on the internet. So Before or the after chance. the dream? Uh, I was going to look that up while you play. Because honestly, this is going to be something you should probably play. So anyway, new game. Okay, because it might take us more than an hour if we're it might. pause it over things. It might, and but I just wanted discuss. to warn people ahead of time. Oh. This is ominous. Guy out in a thunderstorm during curfew with a briefcase. Would you consider this totally normal or creepy? I, you know what? Let's go totally normal. I want to see what happens. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, the song. Oh, it's really the pop goes the weasel. That's still creepy. Because it means there's going to be a survive. Uh, there's not not a survive, a surprise. There's definitely going to be something popping out of the bushes. Danger, no swimming. Ah, eyes. Has a small vessel to go on to. But what is he going to do? And then he got hit by lightning. Or he's going to fall into the water in the briefcase with him. Maybe. Why Why is he standing on this? With an umbrella. On an open body of water. This man literally wishes for death. I... Tell that oh, man birds. to turn right back around and get out of the water. Holy crap. Like, I get this is supposed to be, like, dark and gloomy and kind of creepy, but... Danger, no swimming. Am I gonna... Am I gonna hit this? Wait, is he calling someone? Dunno. Oh, do I want to get this... So the... Do we just want to be a stop? 
interesting. I have no idea. So, the back one also switches that. But this one, it moves the whole thing. So that moves together, which means I don't know if I want this to have a corner or a side up top. What do you think? Oh, wait. No, there's a line on each side. See? Oh. Yep, yep. But I want the lines to merge at the top. So what I really need to do is I need to have this go here, that go into place. Oh, well, looks like that was close enough. Interact. Is that going to detonate something? Or open up his secret lair? Ooh, you're right. Something gonna emerge from the depths? It's a tube. Maybe he's just gonna deposit the suitcase there, or is he gonna enter? Wait, did it just couple to his boat? Yeah, apparently it did. That it must was... be really airtight. Yep. When it's closed. Or there's just a giant massive hole in the bottom of the boat. And good luck him. Or just everything is 2D, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Wait, is that that Arthurton? Yeah. Or was he just dreaming about there being an Arthur Ten. What? Oh. Oh. I must have dozed off. Uh, perhaps we need a spot of tea to wake us up. What do you say, Rufus? <laughs> yes, yes. Quite right. Better get back to work. This book won't write itself. Maybe I should start somewhere easier. I'll come back to the prologue later. The sun rose over another perfect day in picturesque Arthurton. <laughs> the animation's so cute. It is. I like how it did the quick pans. Oh. To the casual observer, Arthurton seemed like any other small, quiet town was nestled in a valley between two mountains, lined by lustrous forests, and perched on the edge of a pristine lake. It had a main street with all the essentials, including a place to sip coffee. It had schools, a college, a church, and a police station. Agatha Krusty's <laughs> yeah, Mr. Beans, Dale and Dan's, the great placebo pharmacy. Uh, it even had a museum no one ever visited. It was the kind of place you might find anywhere on your travels. Typical, maybe even forgettable. But there was one thing in Arthurton that was unlike any other town in the whole world. Actually, it was a girl. Her name was... Jenny LeClue. She was the world's greatest detective. Bigelstein Residence. Oh. Hello, Glenda. Yes, he said he might ring. Uh, okay, patch me through then. Richard? 
Yes, I got it. I did, and my answer is no. I understand that, but... Yes, of course, but... No, 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 no. Nothing is settled. I'm not going to do it. It goes against everything my book stands for. What do you think the guy is proposing? Uh... Is it about Jenny LeClue, or is this something else? Hmm. No, not yet, but... If I could just... Please, listen to what I'm saying! Oh, we can look at the desk. Letter to... Oh, Finkelstein's draft. Well, let's see. I'll let you read this, maybe. Uh, or I should? Yep. Oh god, there's five pages. We'll go. <sighs> Letter to Finkelfans. Draft. Well, it's me again, Arthur K. Finkelstein. And here we are at book 38 of the Jenny LeClue series, her most joyful adventure yet. Thank thank you all. The, uh, thank... Thank you to all the new Jenny LeClue flan flans out there. <laughs> you have both been incredibly supportive. To answer your questions, despite any rumors you may have heard, of course the Jenny books will continue. As long as there's ink in my pen and ribbon in my typewriter. And yes, it'll be more of the same. I refuse to change my formula. Arthurton will always be a safe and happy place. Oh, so was the guy proposing more Like action? death or murder or something yeah, like that? Something like that. So oh, Kickstarter backers. These are the lists. Kickstarter backers. <laughs> That's a cute way of doing it. Okay. So there's that. Okay, we've already read those. Oh, it's 3D. Mm-hmm. What is in here? From the office of Richard Inkwell. All right. Okay. Dear Arthur, hope all is well. Afraid I've got bad news, old chum. There's no easy way to say it, so I've attached the latest book sales numbers. Nowadays, young readers want more mystery and danger. You're losing them with Jenny's increasingly timid and repetitive adventures. One bit of good news, it's too late for the stores to cancel their orders of the next book. So, we're going to give you one last go and see if you can breathe some life into the old girl. We want you to try a proper murder story, or murder mystery. Start killing people off. Add some drama. The bottom line is, if you don't step it up, I'm afraid it's a case of Jenny and the last hurrah. I'm not a murderer. Well, th that's what oh, that's Finkelstein what... is writing. Yep. The whole one last go, step it up, a proper murder mystery. Yep. I want to flip it over? Yeah, how do I flip? There we go. Another positive news, someone from a real newspaper finally reviewed your last book. A hack? Uh-oh. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit so we can see this. Jenny LeClue and the Missing Marmalade Sandwich. The 38th and hopefully last book in a series which is very much, much past its prime. Once a collection of mystery stories cherished by children all over the world, Jenny LeClue has since taken a nosedive into mediocrity. Blank. Without reservation. Blankety blank. Worst piece of blah 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 blah. Arthur K. Finkelstein, blur, 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 quality, and blur, 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 complete waste of time. Despite, blur, I, I, I'm trying to read past the you marker, kinda but can. you can a little bit. I suppose I can zoom in more. No, that's as much as you can zoom. The only mystery left, Arthur Turn, is how the trash keeps getting published. This reader clear, nearly died of boredom. On a positive note, the book makes a great doorstop. And that's probably Finkelstein's. Wouldn't know a good story if you bit you in the rump. Um, so the worst bits out. I imagine this all might come as a bit of a shock, but we've got to move with the times. Throw in a murder or two, a dash of real tragedy, and who knows? Maybe we've got one great story left in you. I'll bring you later to discuss. Sorry about your career. Cheer up, though, eh? Richard Inkwell. P.S. Squash next week. At least you'll have time to work on that backhand soon. Now, squash, is that 
another form of tennis or something? Uh, squash is... Because like a backhand. Squish. Yeah, so... Swish. It's against a wall with, like, a harder... With harder, like, plastic pallet, uh, paddles. Mm -hmm. If I remember right. Oh, I can move the coffee. I think that's supposed to be tea, probably. I thought he said he liked his coffee. No, he said he wanted tea, though. Oh, he said he wanted tea? Oh, you're right. Well, yeah. there was just coffee in the town. Yep. And that's what he was writing. Right there. Her name was Jenny LeClue. She was the world's greatest detective. Yep, and that's what he just wrote. You don't understand what you're asking for. You want me to turn Jenny's world upside down? Kill off my characters and destroy everything I've built over the last 30 years? Oh, look at his eyes quivering. This is terrible. Fine. I'll give you what you want. But I warn you, I'm a stream of consciousness writer. And you have unleashed my fury! Good day, sir! Boring. Predictable. Ha! It's mur- if it's murder they want, it's murder they'll get. Mm. Chapter 1. It should have been another perfect day in Arthurton, but today was different, and nothing would ever be the same again. To begin with, Jenny LeClue was dead. <gasps> Are those stab wounds and green stuff? Her skin was pale. Her eyes glassy and frozen. But what, what cruel fate had befallen our beloved detective? No, no, no! Never move the victim! Miss LeClue? She's doing it again. Jenny LeClue, you are a dead body. Dead bodies don't talk. Julie LeClue, former detective, teaches dumb students, terrible cook, great mom. But he's doing it wrong. As wonderful as it would be if all cadavers were so talkative, we must deduce the cause of death without their help. With only the evidence laid before us. We build a picture from the fragments left behind. We collect clues, interpret the data, and solve our puzzle one piece at a time. Until it feels as if the victim is speaking to us. But Jenny is right, Jonathan. You mustn't disturb the crime scene. Vital evidence could be lost. Sorry, Miss LeClue. You've all had a chance to study the body. Who can postulate how she met her demise? Oh, uh, me, me. I think it was an accident. Yeah, she obviously wasn't looking where she was going. So she slipped off the wet floor. And cracked her head open, like an egg. And then she bled to death. Really? How can you tell? Well, there's a giant pool of blood under her head. Yeah, I know. I was being sarcastic. Oh. Actually... You're both wrong. What? It was cold-blooded. Murder! Murder? 
Don't be ridiculous. Where's the murder weapon? There's no evidence anyone else was even here. Oh, yes, there is. It was murder, and I can prove it. The case of the dead lab assistant. Jenny had read all the books. She'd absorbed all her mother's teachings. But there was nothing quite like getting your hands dirty. How many people get the chance to solve their own murder? The first step in any good deduction was collecting evidence. Seemingly insignificant details could provide a vital piece of the puzzle. First, I'll search the crime scene for clues. Then she'd analyze the data. And finally... Deduce the real cause of death. Find those clues, Shell. I mean... It looks like they don't really care about the stab wounds. Oh, there we go. Jenny's blue sweater was scruffy and quite uncomfortable. But her grandmother had knitted it. So it was her favorite. The more it itched, the closer she felt to her. <laughs> Suffice to say, it itched quite a lot. Approximately eight sizes too big. And covered in mud. Jenny's feet were covered in blisters. You really don't want to wear shoes that big. There's no doubt the victim lost a lot of blood. Without her trusty bifocals, Jenny couldn't see the nose in front of her face. On account of I never gave her one. <laughs> there, they were her window to the world, and the lens through which she focused her keen detective vision. Anything about this hairpin? Wasn't Jenny's style to wear accessories, but this hair clip was an exception. Its function as a lockpick had saved Jenny from a long night trapped in her school locker. She'd worn it ever since. And now we'll finally get to the juicy bit. That green stuff coming out of her juicy mouth. Juicy bits. Gross. Ew. There we go. The victim has a green smudge on her lips. It's not lipstick. Okay. Oh, I see. So we find. Oh, da, da, da. Mr. Bean. The ends justify the beans. The ends justify the beans. Oh, there, there's green stuff on that. What a waste of perfectly good coffee! Jenny's love for coffee was almost as strong as her passion for crime solving. Chalky green residue on the rim. Smells like burnt matches. And we have one more clue that we have yet to find. Check her hand. Right? No. Other, Other hand. hand? No, right? I thought it's uh, I saw it line up. Oh, there oh, you go. Oh, the puddle. The floor is wet and slippery, but also immaculately clean. Don't tell me that some cleaning solution got into her coffee and she somehow drank it and then s s what okay i've seen enough time to wrap this case up jenny was a meticulous record keeper noting every relevant clue in a trusty journal a great detective knew that solving a mystery was simply a matter of connecting the dots I'm certain this wasn't a mere accident. Now I just need to prove it. So it's probably the giant muddy, no. How, how we do know that she didn't slip? Well, it's not the wet floor. It's not the glasses well, or the wet sweater. Wet floor and the boots. Well, it's because- Giant muddy boots, but the floor is immaculately the, clean. The floor was immaculately clean. That's what I was thinking. Boots and the wet floor. Mm-hmm. Oh. So you go down to make a deduction. Make a deduction. There we go. The victim's boots are filthy. They should have been they should have left big muddy footprints on the floor. 
So where are they? Oh, what yeah, am I keep, supposed to do? Yeah, keep making keep deductions. I see. This is an interesting system. Someone else was here, but who? Either someone washed away her footprints, or she was carried here. Okay, that proves she didn't slip. So how did she actually die? Well, it's going to definitely be the coffee cup mixed with the I mouth. would almost say body position and blood, maybe? But... Yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, go for it. poisoned? Unless it's the pool of blood and the She just body has a... Position. I mean, cause of death. A lot of blood. Go to the blood one for a second. Eh, maybe not. Fresh I don't pool know. of sticky blood. Victim was lying face up. Yeah, go with Victim's it. Victim's lips are dry and crusty and stained green. No coffee left, just a chalky green residue that smells of almonds. But what would that be? Cyanide? Yeah, does that smell like it? I, I mean, so. cyanide is a bluish green, hence the cyan bit. Okay, let's see. Arsenic. That. Coffee, deadly but delicious. Smells of burnt matches. There's a green residue in the bottom of the victim's coffee cup. It smells of burnt matches. Phosphorus! Also found in common garden fertilizer. Eh? Yep, you're right. Mm hmm. The same green mark is on the victim's lips. Her coffee was spiked with fertilizer. Someone clearly wanted her dead. Ah, the case of the dead lab assistant. Gone before her time. Was it poison? Yes. A blow to the head? Yes. An accident? Certainly not. No footprints and an unshattered mug. She was killed somewhere else and carried here. This is a story of a scorned ex-lover. Jenny? The gardener enacting his revenge. Jenny? A deadly brew of fertilizer and caffeine coursing through the veins. That's quite enough, thank you. What happens to the gardener? Is this going to be on the test? Remember, class, even the smartest criminals make mistakes. This is how we catch a killer. But what's the point of all this? Yeah, there hasn't been a murder in Arthurton in years. Every town has a dark side. Even Arthurton. By doubting, we are led to question. And by questioning, we arrive at the truth. Okay, that's all for today. Don't forget, next class is our field trip to the morgue. So, have a light lunch. Oh, look at that in the background. A great detective trusts their instincts, follows evidence, turns in their report on time. Essay on decapitation and dismemberment? What? Mm -hmm. Always. Thinks like a killer. Never makes it personal. Reveals their hand too soon. Leaves their coffee unattended. Never, ever makes assumptions. It's nice. The students need to think for themselves, Jenny. That's why they're here at Gumboldt, to learn. I just figured we all had places to go. Speaking of which... And where are you off to, young lady? I'm a dead body, Mom, remember? Dead bodies don't tell. See ya! Wait, before you go... I have something for you. 
Cool! What is it? If I told you, that would spoil the fun, wouldn't it? The Leclus didn't simply hand each other presents. They hid them. It was a family tradition, and Jenny had developed a sixth sense for finding them. With her tr trusty magnifying glass at her side, nothing eluded her. That's not really well hidden. Ooh, I know it's something in her bag. Ooh, do, do, do. We'll do that. Not the lonely boner in the corner. You mean the skeleton? That's what I said. A new journal! The Jenny. There's nothing better than the aroma of a fresh leather notebook. It smelled like mystery. Without missing a beat, she did what any detective worth their salt would do. She decorated it. <laughs> I love nerds. Can I decorate? Oh look, you can tilt it. And make it big or small. Can I decorate? Sure. Oh. Wander can decorate. So what do we have? Ooh, I like the little stars, the purple one and the yellow. You can see. rotate yeah, it yeah, with uh, the right stick. Rotate with the right stick. Eh. Oh. oh! What? Oh no, you selected the files. New, uh, she imagined all the thrilling cases that would soon fill its pages. On the first page, her mother had written in a description. I did not press A! Well, whatever. Too bad, we didn't I guess we it have all. one star. Do we, did you even put it down? I have no idea. Hopefully we can decorate it later. A great detective never gives up. Love, Mom. A great detective never gives up. Love, Mom. Oh. Maybe we, we can go back? Decorate. Okay. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Gimme, gimme. Gimme. Okay, fine. Don't okay. mess up this time. Pick up. Delete. Add. Okay, star. But there we go. Rotate it with the right Scan. stick. <laughs> That's good. All right, what are the other ones? There are hearts. There's the magnifying glass and the I love nerds and the X's. Making a peculiar symbol. It's not quite even. That's better. That's good. Uh, remember, it's off the... No, a little bit more to the right. There we go. That's fine. A little bit more to the left, though. Unless it's not perfectly symmetrical to begin with. Might be that, too. That looks fine. Gonna spend so much of the hour. Oh no no no! Working no. on this. The, uh, the hour is a very specific point in the game. Okay, so now a heart. Works. Okay. That almost looks intentional. <laughs> mm hmm. All right. Wait, 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 we didn't see all the tabs! No! We can see the rest. Shell, we're gonna have this journal open the entire game. No, that's true. I love it! Thanks, Mom! Jenny. I wanted to talk about... Um... To say... Uh... Somewhere in the back of Jenny's highly caffeinated brain, an alarm bell was ringing. Her mom was hesitating. What could possibly be causing her to act so out of character? Maybe it was an author gone wild. Hmm. Oh. Limited eye contact. Watery eyes. Defensive body language. Missing ring! <gasps> Oh no! Divorce? Crossed arms. 
furrowed brow. Jenny saw it coming from a mile away. Her mother was about to get... Emotional. I've really got to go. No, Jenny, wait. I need your help. Or did she lose her ring? It's not that she's getting a divorce or something. Maybe she just lost her ring. Mm-hmm. What? <gasps> really? Jenny couldn't believe her ears. It's extremely unusual for a mother to ask for her help. It must be something very important. Tracing the steps of a deranged killer? A cold case that only someone with Jenny's expertise could solve. I've misplaced the students' essays on decapitation. See if you can find them for me before you leave. I have to run. Wait, the ring didn't come into play here? Wow. The case of the misplaced papers? Are you sure you want to trust me with such a complex task? I have no doubt you'll be able to find them. They're around here somewhere. Jenny was unsure if her mother was unable to detect sarcasm, or just really good at ignoring it. Help, Mom. Yeah, we'll help, Mom. Okay, Mom. I'll find them before I leave. On one condition. Yes? You have to help me let me- well, uh, You have to let me help grade them. One of Jenny's favorite pastimes was grading papers. She was legendarily uh, brutal with her grading schemes, and even gave, gave students imaginary grades, such as R, or even worse than F. Oh, I'm actually pretty close. Mm -hmm. Nothing pleased her more than giving a big shoddy F to an overconfident student. Don't push, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, everybody, is, <laughs> everybody is the author now. Ha. Don't push your luck. Please? Hmm. Okay. Yes! Find the papers and go straight home. Oh, but I'm meeting Keith tonight. No buts. Remember? Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm still feeling the effects of being poisoned for your class. Well then, I have the perfect antidote. You're staying with your cousin this weekend, and you still need to pack. Aw, oh, this again? Look, I've considered your offer, Mom, and I'm going to have to decline. Hmm. I'm old enough to take care of myself. I'll be back late tonight. There's meatloaf in the fridge. Question logic or question motive? Motive. Late again? What are you up to? Jenny LeClue, it's been a difficult week. Could you please just do what you're being told to for once and stop asking questions? Fine. And try to stay out of trouble. When do I ever get into trouble? Alright, let's find these papers and get out of here. Examine the jam jar. Ooh, it's overflowing. One of Jenny's earliest memories was making raspberry jam with her mom in her boots for some reason. I... You can press A? I... There it goes. I was pressing the wrong button. It's the perfect substitute for blood in class demonstrations. And better tasting than the pig's blood the textbook recommends. Music's pretty good. Mug, look at the... Ooh, skeleton. Examine boner. <laughs> Looking rather trim today, Ethan. New diet? Yes. What's the matter? Lost your funny bow? Also, yes. Hmm. Is there a way 
maybe to run. I don't know. Probably not. She's got a very, like, determined stride. And that's maybe it's because she's lacking her boots. Yeah, what happened to her oversized shoes? They're gone. She's such tiny feet. She has minuscule feet. Size point one. Oh, yeah, this is what we were reading earlier. Becoming a great detective took more than book smarts. You needed real life experience. And Jenny was always on the lookout for a chance to get her hands dirty. Yep, so that was the paper. Knows when to ask for help. Ah. <laughs> yeah, we already read this one, but fun. Where would the papers have gone to, though? Please do not touch. Hmm. Someone must be running an experiment. <gasps> Some kind of weird radioactive allergy. Gross. Pretty soon it's going to sprout legs. I wonder if that has to do with the guy with the briefcase in the underwater area. That's interesting. We weren't prompted to say walk down this way. Can like you only go left and right or can you go up and down too? I, I can only go left and right, which is weird. Because you would think that I'd be able to... Oh, this is how I run. Yes! So that's the right button. Oh, this allows me to look around. Okay. So now I know how to run. That'll make this go by a lot more swiftly. Oh, it's underneath the board. Oh, I, I see the board right there. Let me... Ah, oh, I'm not... It's not in line of sight. Okay. But we... Yep. There we go. Oh, I have to hold. Search. There we go. Whoop. It's one of the student's term papers. You can tell by the terrible handwriting and erroneous conclusions. Mom must have put them behind the chalkboard. Can I flip the chalkboard over then? Yeah, there was a grab. Go to the side of it. Grab. There we go. Ah, there we go. you. Time to get out of here. Jenny looked around the room one last time. Was she ready to leave? Do you think there's anything yeah, more go. that we need to look at? Nah. 